Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss what is a contingent liability. Contingent liability is a good illustration of why you will need to take FAR or why you should take financial accounting and reporting before you take the auditing section of the CPA exam. Because on the auditing exam, you will face topics from FAR that you need to know how to deal with it when it comes to auditing. So if you know it from a financial accounting perspective, it will be easy to audit those items or to learn how to audit these items. So we're going to start by reviewing really quick. What is a contingent liability? A contingent liability is a potential liability. It's under gap that may arise from a past event and is dependent on the future event, future outcome that may or may not occur. So what does that mean? Something happened in the past. And because of the result of that event, we might have an obligation or a liability into the future. And that liability may or may not happen depend on, depending on certain events. Now, certain liabilities, they are clear cut. You cannot argue with them. I'll give you an example. Other contingent liabilities, we may not be so sure. We have to wait for the outcome. So it's an, un it's an uncertainty about the company's liability that will only become real when that future event occurs. So what are some typical examples of contingent liabilities? The most typical one is a lawsuit, a legal claim. Someone sues you and you're waiting, you're waiting to see whether you're gonna win, win or lose this lawsuit. A product warranty and environmental remedies costs such as the British Petroleum spill in the Gulf of Mexico that cost British Petroleum 40 billion. Now they know they know they know for sure they're gonna have a liability. But did they know the amount? That's important, and we'll talk about that soon. Also, guaranteeing the debt of others could be a potential liability. Let's assume you guarantee the debt of another company. What happens if that other company cannot pay? What is your what is your obligation here? Do you have a contingent liability? As well as other examples, but those are usually the main ones. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. The question is when to record. So when to book, when to report a contingent liability? Well, under GAAP, a contingent liability should be reported, should be recorded in the financial statement. The technical word is recognized when two conditions are met. The first condition is it is probable. Probable means what? Probable means more likely than not. Under GAAP, they assume three, prob three conditions. We have what we call the remote. Remote possibility means no chance you are going to lose. There is possible. Possible. And the highest one is probable. So we're talking about probable. The event that's occurring, that's going to be occurring is probable. There's a good chance you are going to lose. Now, what is that percentage? I don't know. It's a high percentage that the future event will occur and it will result in a financial obligation. Again, think of a lawsuit. Companies get sued all the time. If there is no chance you are going to lose, there is a remote chance. Just it's a water under the bridge. You don't mention it. What if the what if the what if the probability is possible? Well, under those circumstances, you disclose. What if the possibility is probable? Well, we have to find out. If it's probable, we need to meet one more condition. If it's probable, plus you know the amount. In other words, you need to know the amount and it's probable when those two conditions exist. So the two conditions is the probable plus the amount. Amount means the dollar amount plus the dollar amount. This is going to give you a liability. What if it's only probable? If it's only probable, you will disclose, just FYI. So two conditions have to exist. And I know for a fact, not I know for a fact, I heard from many CPA candidate that this topic is testable. When do you record the potential liability? When two conditions exist. 
the probability is high, which is probable, more likely than not, and plus, remember the plus, plus the amount, you can estimate the amount with certain certainty. When those two conditions exist, you have a contingent liability that you have to record. If the amount cannot be reasonably estimated, as I told you, the liability should be disclosed, not recorded, disclosed in the financial statement, but the specific amount should not be recorded. Disclosed means disclosed in the note. In addition to recording the liability, the company must also provide adequate disclosure. So if you do record a liability because of those, those two conditions exist, you would still do a disclosure, of course, because you want, for example, if you're being sued, in which jurisdiction? Who's the plaintiff? Why are they suing you? What is the potential outcome? How long it's going to take? Those are all estimates. Nevertheless, you have to discuss them. You just you don't tell someone, I just have a lawsuit. Tell me where, who's suing you, for what purpose, in which jurisdiction, when do you expect to have uh, a response from the jury or the judge and the potential financial impact? On, on, on the financial statements. And what is your plan as a company to mitigate the risk of that contingency occurring? Now, from an auditor's perspective, because everything that I talked about, you, you would learn in a financial accounting course. Now, from an auditor's perspective, we need how do auditors identify contingent liabilities? And this is what we're concerned about. The first thing is you ask management, inquiry of management. The auditor will ask questions of the company's management to gain to gain an understanding of the company's operation and any potential contingent liabilities. What do you mean by management? Well, you talk to the purchasing manager about any long-term purchase contract or commitments. Do we have any of those? They could arise, they could give us a potential liability. Ask about various contracts, review them. Loan agreement, loan guarantees, leases, bank confirmation that could show that we, we are guaranteeing the debt of others. Review the minutes for the board of directors, people on the top, executive committee, top management, because if there's any lawsuit, anything important, they may talk about it. They may talk about it in those meetings and you will catch it in the minutes because they would record those minutes. Review any communication between the company and the lawyer and lawyer or lawyers. It doesn't matter. Review communication between the company and any regulatory agency. Now, obviously, if you're auditing a company and the company could be subject to regulatory agencies like environmental agencies or any sort of regulatory agencies, you need to be familiar with the framework of the of, of, the, of the operation of the company. So that if they possibly could have a lawsuit, you should have your radars up and running to kind of try to catch any lawsuit. Talk to the lawyers, inquiry with client attorneys, you would send them a letter. And there is a one whole recording about this, you know, how to what to, how to ask the lawyers and what's the lawyer's responsibility. But simply put, you have to ask the lawyers about any potential litigation. Read interim financial statements and notes. Now, if you're uh, reporting the end year, look at the quarters. You might find something that we mentioned. It's like, hold on a second, what happened to this case, right? And the most important one, last but not least, is a representation letter or a rep letter. And you'll hear this rep letter again and again in an audit course or the CPA exam. And what is that? Basically, the rep letter, it's the company, the management telling you about anything that they wanted to tell you, you ask them about, but you want it in writing. So if the manage management says, we have the following lawsuit, A, B, C, and they did not tell you about D and E, well, what? you did not tell me. I mean, I did my job. I did what I'm supposed to do, but you're also supposed to tell me if there's anything else, tell me in that rep letter or representation letter. And that's why I have it in caps, because Rep letter appears again and again in various assurance services. Basically, what you want to do, what the what the auditor trying to do is, in a sense, push the responsibility to management. You told me this, put it in writing, that that's the only thing that you know you are aware about in terms of how many lawsuits or any contingent liability. Because it's your responsibility at the end of the day. I mean, I'm going to look for things, but I may not be able to catch everything, but at least you told me that you told me everything that you know. That's going to give me some assurance from an auditor's perspective that legally I may be able to protect myself down the road. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and do what? Work MCQs, Previ previously released AICPA questions, multiple choice questions that's going to help you understand this topic. Invest in yourself, invest in your career. This topic is easy and this topic is testable. Testable means you can get few points to get the 75, to pass your exam and move on with your career and have a better life. Good luck, everyone. Study hard and, of course, stay safe.